This is Learn Accounting Podcast by me, Professor Accounting, Episode 8, Recording Credit Sales and Bad Debts in the Ledgers. Let's look at an example I've put together. Uh, we've got um, A. Smith Ledger, Debtor, B. Smith Ledger and the Bad Debts Ledger, and I've uh, got the cash book over here as well. Um, let's look at um, just a, uh, ways in which we can record credit sales and maybe some examples of how debts can, can become bad. Um, let's look at first one. Let's say A. Smith. Let's say A. Smith. Um, owes money during the begin at uh, the beginning of the year, so balance BD, and uh, let's say he owes five hundred pounds. Uh, don't that there. So uh, this means balance BD on the debit side of a debt account means that tells you how much money uh, that debtor owes the business at, at uh, the starting of the the period. Balance BD means the start of the period, accounting period, typically January the first in textbooks, uh, but not all businesses start. Um, uh, their financial year, um, counting year January the 1st, but it's the beginning of the accounting period. So let's say um, some, some kind of narrative, let's say Ace tells the business um, uh, is unable uh, to make payment, uh, let's say in full, so he can't pay any money, um, then straight away if, if he can't pay then in accounting um, yeah, standards we, we must write off the debt. So uh, this will be a bad debt, or 500 pounds so it's the full amount because he can't pay anything and he hasn't indicated he could pay some money so this would be a bad debt 500 pounds so we therefore need to uh, reduce the 500 pounds already in the account close it off so we need to credit the debtor account so 500 pounds will go in here which is there and obviously we need to tell, tell ourselves what it's for but it's for a bad debt so that um, uh, details box there is tells you where you're making the other entry. So the rule there is we credit the debtor account by the amount that's gone bad, and this in, in, uh, information here, the bad debts, tells you where the other entry is. So it'd be the debit entry. So let's complete the double entry by debiting the bad debts account. So it's five hundred pounds. And well, where is the link? Where's the double entry to get to from here? Well, that's going to be the debtor account. So it'll be A Smith debtor. Okay, so it's a double entry there we've just done. We've just debited bad debts, credited A Smith debtor, both by £500. Okay, that's a little example there for a full bad debt. Now, another one where in B Smith. Let's say B Smith, so we had balance BD for A Smith. Now let's say B Smith doesn't have any balance BD because he's not going to owe any money at the start of the year. Let's say he buys something during the year. So if he buys something during the year, it's sales. Uh, let's say he's um, bought £700. Uh, let's say in this case, a bit of uh, narrative. Um, is um, only able uh, to make payment, uh, or let's say, I'm going to do, let's say, £900. Okay, so again, similar situation, you can only pay £900. So if you can, the first one is unable to make payment in full. This one, you can only pay £900. So we can pay some money. So the first thing we do, therefore, is record the payment. Um, now, I know it says he's only able to, but let's say he, obviously, questions are more specific, that he does actually make that payment. So the business is not going to reject a payment of some kind. So uh, this payment is made, so maybe just put that in next. Payment made um, by check for £900. Okay, so let's say he makes that payment. Then, more specific, I agree. Let's record that payment, so it's going to be in the cash book. So cash book is where it's going to go to, and it's £900. So we're creating the B. Smith uh, debtor account because that and any entry in this side is reducing the debtor um, amount. Uh, where is the, so that's a credit entry, where is the debit entry going? Well, it's going in the cash book because it's recording payment. So debit of cash book and £900, credit the bad debts account by £900 as well. So I've got the cash book, let's go over to the cash book. Uh, let's put that entry in. So let's just have a think about the cash book. Just a very, I mean, not teaching the cash book, but briefly, you typically have balance BD of some kind. Um, all right, make it interesting. Maybe you've got on both sides. Uh, why would you have them on both sides? Well, you could have this this side uh, is the receipts, this side is the payments. So balance BD, you'd always have a balance BD uh, on this side of the cash. You can't have negative cash. So let's say you've got any of your pounds, let's say bank, you've got nothing because you have. A bank overdraft. Let's say you've got there. So it's bank overdraft. So quick extra bit there. Any balance BD on the credit side can only be for the bank uh, in the cash book. You can't have a balance here. This you can't have a value uh, in this um, box here because you can't have any cash. So and you can't have a bank balance and a bank overdraft at the same time. 
So let's just, just a bit of a, a detail there. Let's look at the, the double entry. So we need to debit the cash book. Uh, why? Because B Smith is paying money. So £900 uh, for the cash book. So this is going to be £900. This is going to be uh, wrong ledger. £900 paid by cheque. And who is this for? This is B Smith Dinner. I know you'll be using pen and paper. It should be. And B Smith Ledger, £900 is going in there. And why is it in the bank column? Well, first of all, why is it the side? Because that's receipts of money, not a payment of money. And it's the bank column because um, payment made by cheque. So anything by cheque affects the bank only. So that's, I mean, you don't have to put the lines in just to, I'll just do it for, for simplicity. Now, I'm going to leave that as it is. Obviously, they, there could be more transactions in there. Uh, in a different question, maybe um, some other topics prefer to bank cash book. But it's a good revision of the layout. But I'll just going to show you the double entry for the cash book. So £900, debit the cash book. Now, we haven't finished with the B Smith account because, well, look at it. It's um, it, where's the difference? Well, the difference um, in value is going to be the bad debt. So what's the nine pounds off seventeen hundred? Well done, it's eight hundred pounds. Um, this is going to be bad debts. Now, just to mention a point here, I've only give you brief information, but if uh, in questions they say is only able to make payment of nine hundred pounds, then naturally you would treat the difference uh, as a bad debt. So it is an assumption, but. It, we, we take it as it says, if, it, if you can only pay a certain amount, well, and the £700 is expected to be paid, then it's going to be a bad debt. But again, some questions can be nice where they say, treat the remaining balance as a bad debt. That's obviously more helpful. So add up the columns, uh, which is going to give you this. Now, if you're doing ledgers, I suppose that way I've just shown you is one way, but how else could you get this value? Well, one of the way I get students to look at it is add up the, obviously we don't know that for a until we calculate it, so bad. Add up the bigger side, which is this side. This uh, is the credit balance. Um, move the total over. Uh, this here, you could just do this minus this, obviously using normal calculators, and you get the same answer. So that's use the ledger to help you work out the maths. Um, now let's just do the double entry. So we haven't done the uh, the bad debt for Beedith. So bad debt's account uh, needs to make an entry. And you know it's going to be a debit, but prove it. Um, credit the bad debts account, um, debtor account to reduce the debtor. So the de bad debt is the debit entry. So this is going to be B Smith. Uh, this is going to be eight hundred pounds. And just for the example, there the only two bad debts I've got. Now let's just tidy up the bad debts account. So at the end of the financial year, let's say it's January the first till December the thirty-first. Uh, you can put dates in this if you wanted to. I'm not too bothered about dates. Um, just think about them. Um, the end of the financial year, we, we total up the bad debts, always at the end of the year. So, obviously, debit side is always the bigger side. So, at the value, move it over, and then you put the value in the credit side. Uh, some students, I mean, maybe some of you know this already, but some students do this. Balance seat, yeah, because it's at the end of the year, and they do balance BD over here. Uh, they do this. Uh, some of you are probably screaming computer right now, saying that's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. Well, you're absolutely right. This situation will never happen. You will never have a balanced CD or a balanced BD in the bad debts account because we never transfer bad debts to another accounting period. Okay, so for 2011, which is what this year is, um, if this is going to be 2012, you'll never have uh, equals. You'll never have a balance BD of 1300. We never do that. Okay, so let's just correct this now. Let's just show you how it should be. So. You do get students when they learn balance carry downs, balance BDs, they think every ledger will have that. Well, no, it does not. So, uh, balance BD uh, in this case to scrap the whole thing and nothing, nothing. And so, what is that then? What is going to replace the balance CD? Well, bad debts are an expense. Well, you don't always write this, but they're always an expense. So, you send the total expenses to the profit and loss at the end of the year. So, profit and loss will go there. And that's it, it's closed off. So no BDs, no CDs. So if we just think about what's happening there, what entry are we making here? Just do, let's do a journal, the journal, which just dictates what um, entries you're making. You're writing down like a list of entries. So if I do, let's do debit. This is not in the ledger, by the way. It's just an extra uh, thing to uh, look at. Journal, well, what entry is debit entry? Well, let's do that first. Let's say this is uh, profit and loss of 1300. Because uh, we know the credit entries in the bad debts account, so bad debts account, uh, credit entry thirteen hundred. Okay, so that's that as a journal just tells you what you're doing. The bad debts account is being, in this case, credited because it's closing off the debt, bad debts account, and so we're debiting the profit and loss, 
and the rule is if um, a debit to the profit and loss uh, indicates an expense. Okay, so any debit entry which that is, that as it is there is on the credit side of the bad debts, but this detail here tells you where you're debiting in this case. So, and obviously look at the opposite, if you were to do, you can't do it in this case, but any credit entry to the P&L would indicate a revenue. Okay, so moving on further uh, to the next topic, which is bad debts recovered, which is what that would be. But as far as this is concerned, just look at this example. Hopefully you found it useful. So we've looked at the um, A Smith, which is a, a full debt. B Smith, um, obviously, uh, was a bad debt as well. But one kind of key term, which I can bring to you, uh, cash book, uh, because there's a payment made, we call it a partial payment. Okay, so it's quite a nice, the partial payment, the cash book value, um, and then the bad debt, obviously, is written there. Which goes expensive. That's bigger now because I've changed the, the title. Um, so again, over to the cash book. We've showed you that. I'm not, I'm not going to tie it up again. It's just as it is for what I'm showing the example. Uh, but that is how you record uh, credit sales of existing balances during the year, full bad debt, partial payment, and partial bad debt, um, if you wish. And obviously, then how to treat the bad debts that came. So remember the rules for that. And I sort of wanted to show you today. So if I can just the next page. I want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, it's been a podcast by Professor Counting, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.